All right, Brave Nation. This next incredible battle is three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and two losses. He stands 168 centimeters tall and weighs already 57.05 kilograms. Representing Aram Kiev and fighting out of Ukraine, please welcome Alexander Dos Calcio. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 12 wins and two losses. He stands 165 centimeters tall and weighs already 57 kilograms. Representing Dar Team and fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan. Give it up for Azul. Zofakar Alma Doesn't like Carlos Kramer could get you buzzed for some. If he was reading the phone book, I'd be getting jazzed. He's TBE. Fight kicking off here. Partisan crowd very much in favor of Asu Alma Bayev, but as you say, that's the kind of challenge that Alexander Descalcio thrives on. The first takedown will be absolutely pivotal in this fight in very much the same way the first takedown defense could be absolutely pivotal. Short break in the action, a little bit of moisture on the canvas I think, referee coming for fighter health and safety first always in Brave Combat Federation. Now it's talking about the pressure that Jos Kalchuk was facing coming in. Almabayev, of course, fighting in front of a hometown crowd, defending the honor of his nation. He's under a lot of pressure, too. And what did he do? He walked into the cage with a big, huge smile on his face. Yeah, he's a young man that just loves to fight. And as, you know, they've been 14 fights, so Percy makes diamonds, and that young man is an absolute diamond. Can he turn the performance into a diamond? Absolute. Easier said than done when you have Alexander Doskalchuk waiting for, but it's a big shot from Almabayev. This is definitely about the most aggressive Alexander Doskalchuk we've seen. Changing levels with that lead. He lands a big one too right in the middle. Doskalchuk is herky and jerky and now he's in the double. Herky and jerky and going to worky on a takedown. Needs to be wary of that neck. As we've seen that the arm in guillotine is notoriously more difficult to, to finish. Which martial arts of course is in a constant state of evolution. That arm in guillotine came in about 15 years ago. Oh, and he's and gone. Look, look, look at it. Oh, he's gone all oh, in on it. You just wonder how much does he do to the guillotine at this stage when we're only 90 seconds into the very first round. Does he put everything into it in an attempt to get the finish at the risk of burning his arms out? He works this technique a little bit. He tries to pop to his side. He's still rolling that side down just a little bit. Look how calm does Kaltrick is in that situation. You can't quite see if he's got the other hand in, got that S grip on the arms, but he's popping the head out. That's huge for Das Kaltrick. They look to try and get the Dagestani handcuff in this position and unload some serious ground and points. Almabaya apparently looking to set up a new submission. He's got a little bit of a knee shield, foot on the hip. Deep underhooks, doing a good job of protecting himself almost completely while setting up a variety of attacks. This Kalchuk hasn't fought since November of 2018, but does not look like he's missed a step whatsoever. Kurt. How much ring rust do I see here? None. <laughs> As we say, accustomed to going five five minute rounds, that's the championship caliber that this guy has. And right now, just putting the pressure on Asu Almabayev. Phil, I gotta say, I believe those Kalchuk's 
approach to the potential for ring rust was brilliant. He decided to just attack, 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 attack. Maybe his defenses aren't quite as good. Maybe his reflexes aren't quite what he wants them to be. But his attacks sure were. But when you know your cardio is at that level consistently, when you know you've done everything you can, everything you need to do in the gym, that gives you the confidence to, to really put the pressure on your opponent because you know it's a sustained attack over the course of three runs. Sure does, and that's what we're seeing here is an absolutely relentless, sustained attack. Good work by Alabama to get back to his feet, or to a foot, we should say, at this stage. Chris Kaltrick has said in the lead up to this fight that he always plans to win on points, and in doing so, ensures that his cardio is the best it can be. Just culture threw a knee a little while ago. He'd be wise to do one or two more in these exchanges. Just one or two shots if they land can play hugely in your favor on the judges' scorecards. Fantastic work from Almabaya to create that separation. Wasn't far away with the knee. And he wants to get him back. So you're going to take me down? No, I'm going to take you down. <laughs> Beautiful take by Almabaya. Lesser fighters would have given up on it. Oh, I'm running this Kazakh mentality. Oh, takes the back. Whatever you can do, I can do better. Is he underneath the chin? We can't quite see. No, it's just on the chin. Hard fighting going on here from both men. Oh, these Kazakh fighters are made of something very, very different. Absolutely terrifying in their approach. Dos Kalchuk trying to do the right thing by turning into his opponent. Asi Almabayev needs to be careful not to cross the legs here. There is a submission, a scissor submission of Bielbo. And he's trying to try and get the legs. One of the feet pops out. Huge hip pressure from Almabayev. Great nation, there's multiple attacks going on here. The legs were holding the hips. The hips were pushing forward and there was a threat to show. Absolutely phenomenal performance from both fighters. Absolutely, Asi Almabaya. What the first round of fighting? When it looked like it was all Alexander does count to, Asi Almabaya pops right back up, scores a take on of his own, and nearly gets in with a new naked shield. This card has been absolutely bananas. I'm looking very carefully at the corner still, and I have to say, those culture looks a little more shook for lack of a better term. I don't think he was expecting the second portion of the round to unfold as it did. I actually, Frank, I'm not sure I was either, but it unfolded as it did. It was an absolutely brilliant performance from Zupai Car. Zupai Car gathering himself, readying his storm. Second line ready to go, just closing the cage door. Just going. Chuck still breathing a little heavy. By the end of that first round completely changed the complexion and ebb and flow of the fight going into the second round. And now it's Alma Bahir being the one to, to change levels up and down and on the takedown again. What phenomenal entry! The distance he can cover in those takedowns is incredible. And that timing is exquisite. Oh, he's got one hook in, wants to take the back again. This would be another huge upset of Alma Baia was to get the win here tonight. Brilliant head placement, using that head to stop the escape and as well to block against elbows coming back and as well to get his opponent's head where he can hit it. And as you say, Dos Kalchuk looks shook. As I said earlier, when Dos Kalchuk had cage control from standing, those little short knees can make a huge difference when judges are trying to decide who to give it to. Kaltruk's got a loser in now, looks highly unlikely, his back's going to get taken. Needs to pummel in a little bit more and try and reverse the position. Potential for a big knee here, should anyone, or should Amabayev choose to throw it? The body was exposed there of those Kaltruk. 
Nice work with the knee there. Can't quite see if he has the hands connected with the double underhooks. Oh, nasty, nasty knees to the legs. In the first two minutes or so, this second round have been all Asiyah Mubayev. They have 100%. As I said, this isn't ring rust. This is somebody who's polished. He's a polished shining star. Nice head control from Asu Almabayev. He just changes levels beautifully. Big takedown from the There's a back take. There's a hole. Looking to get the left hook in first, and the right one will be easy. With a vice like grip just underneath the ribs of Dos Kaltrick, squeezing the life out of him. That's one hook, and he's using that hook muscle to drag to the takedown. Could be getting close. It's a dangerous game to play to jump into the back tape. We're driving to the mat. It is Phil, but these are Kazakh warriors. They are not afraid of danger. That scimitar on his back is an apt metaphor for what we're seeing. I don't know about that, but he sure does have a nice sword on his shorts. There it is! Both hooks! Both hooks are in place! Not quite underneath the chin, but... We got some danger, Brady! Oh, he, oh, he swipes! I think he's underneath the chin! This could be it! He's under! That's it! That's it! It's over! What a night for Kazakhstan! What is in the record in Kazakhstan? He's under! Another incredible battle inside the Brave CF 53 cage. This comes to an end at 3 minutes and 47 seconds of the second round. Your winner by tap out from rear naked choke from Almaty Kazakhstan, Azul Zofeka This next battle is three, five in a row.
Outlaws in the Flyweight Division. Introducing your first warrior, Fang of the Blue Corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of four wins and no losses. He stands 165 centimeters tall and weighs already 57.1 kilograms. Representing Universal Fighter and fighting out of Baku, Azerbaijan. Please welcome Imran Bakarabo. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 14 wins and two losses. He stands 165 centimeters tall and weighs already 57.1 kilograms. Representing Dar Team and fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan. Please welcome Azul Zalfikar Almaty. Your referee is the bandit, Decky Lucky. Big thanks to B1, our medical team partner, world-class medical services available from B1. Cage is locked, fighters are loaded, we are ready to go. Final bout tonight of our preliminary card and the action has been incredible thus far, setting us up beautifully for those three world championship title bouts. This is the final fight on the preliminary portion of the card. Almabayev opening up with the spin. And on the takedown, diving on the neck. A little bit of impetuous there, trying to jump guard. Absolutely beautiful head positioning, was a little bit hard to see. It looked like there was a guillotine there, but there wasn't even anything remotely close to the guillotine because of that perfect head positioning on that snatch double leg. Asya Amobayev's strength really lies in his grappling and his flair for the submission finish. Isn't it free to throw big shots standing from unorthodox positions as we saw with that spinning kick? Amobayev needs to get busier. He's actually losing this little striking battle. Taking Takedowns do not count for much in mixed martial arts unless you cause some impact with strikes, pass to further position, go for a submission. So far, we're actually seeing more strikes from bottom. Amabayev needs to turn it up. Trying to roll those hands inside is Amabayev to get them free and land the strikes. Both guys just fighting for position, exchanging grips and underhooks. Needs to be wary of the arm bar. Looked like he was trying to bring the arm across there just to isolate it. Almabayev starting to bring it. But starting to bring it. If Magaramov is to get any kind of offensive work done, he needs to open up that guard and try and create angles for himself. Oh, legs went up, maybe for an arm bar momentarily there, possibly a triangle. Dead look earlier like he was trying to work for the arm bar, but the guard was closed. That's a nice shot from Almabayev. As you rightly said, Kirik Almabayev is the number one ranked professional flyweight in Kazakhstan and the number one ranked professional flyweight in all of Central Asia. Open guard here from Magaramov. Oh, looks like he's trying to creep that guard up to try and secure something, but solid, solid positional grappling and almost stubbornness from Almabayev in this position. Working those legs up after the midpoint of the first round gets a little bit difficult. Body gets very slick with sweat. Hard to secure a grip of the legs high up on the body. Decky Larkin may want to see a little bit more from the fighters fairly soon. Amabayev doing a good job of just completely stalling and halting any kind of progressive offense. There it was. Decky wants to see action. If he doesn't see it in fairly short order, something around 10 more seconds or so, he will stand him up. And we got a little bit of action. Legs were moving up. Decky 
work and trying to give the fighters every opportunity to get their work done. 90 seconds to go in the first round here. Ramabai is starting to open up a little bit more with the shots, but right now in top position, as, as far as he's concerned, and potentially the judges are concerned, he's winning the fight, so he doesn't need to take any unnecessary risks. Maga Romov throwing those heel kicks from bottom that were prohibited under the unified rules of mixed martial arts for many, many years, now have been brought back. They were first brought to attention by none other than Hoist Gracie in UFC 1. Clumping down on the head was Maga Ramov. A little bit of a frustrating round from Maga Ramov on the bottom. Haven't really been able to get any of his offense working just yet. Definitely increase in the power coming from top and bottom. And perhaps, as I said it uh, during the walkout, Magaramov known for his uh, expressive, dynamic style of striking. Maybe Asya Almobayev has seen that or his coaches have seen that and thought, well, let's take away his biggest weapon, which is his flashy kicks and his spinning attacks. Further, staying on your back and getting slowly hit over and over and over again. Much easier to do from top than on bottom. Clearly is going to debilitate the top fighter more. Seconds away from the round ending, there it is. There you go, solid, if not particularly eventful round for Asu Almobayev, who was able to completely and systematically shut down any offense of Imran Magaramov. Clear 10-9 round for Asu Almobayev. That was the, the, probably the biggest mistake of the round from Imran, was trying to jump on that guillotine. And, and Kerry, if you're in the corner right now, of Magaramov, what are you saying to him leading into the second round? Circle. It's that simple. He can't come straight at his opponent or he's going to get clinched, pushed up against the fence and taken down, or the opponent's simply going to level change uh, and yeah. take him down, as you saw right there. Thank you, Green Hill, for that terrific replay. There is the jump to guard. The forearm was not in position. That left elbow needs to be quite a bit lower for the uh, opponent to be in danger from that guillotine choke. There was literally zero danger because of the perfect Head positioning showed by Asu Almabayev. And transversely, if you're in the corner of Asu Almabayev, are you just saying to him, oh, lather, rinse, repeat, more of the same, or are you telling him to up the, the tenacity, the frequency, the work the, rate? The corner says lather, rinse, repeat, but, but put the spin cycle on a little bit higher. Just do everything a little bit harder, a little bit more viciously, if you would. Spin in attack from Magaramov. Replied by Asu Almobayev. I do love it when that happens in mixed martial arts, Phil. Somebody tries something real cool. Other fighter says, yeah, I can do that too. Just watch. Almobayev now stalking. Perhaps trying to pressure and clinch against the cage. Try to spin an attack, but Magaramov done well just to evade it stepping into the side. There's another spinning attack from Magaramov. And again, answered, and the double. Is it going to work? Brave Nation, is this takedown going to work? Oh, Ans there it is. Asked, answered, yes, it is. It was almost like watching something tragic happen in slow motion. You knew it was going to happen. You could just see the pain etched across the face of Imran Magaramov because he knew it was happening. It's the first takedown you learn in jiu-jitsu. Secure that body lock right above the hip. Pull the hips in close, walk them backwards, drive them down. But basics win fights. Solid wrist control by Almabayev there. Maybe looking to pass that arm underneath. Nope. Magaramov gets it free. And again, shades of the first round. Quick exchange on the feet and, and back to where the first round played out. There's a little debate in mixed martial arts. It used to be when you took somebody down, you wanted to push their head up against the fence because it shut down their grappling game yeah. so much. Then wall walking attempts, uh, methods to scoot your body up were developed, pushing against the cage. And now it's a little bit more of a debate. I would say the majority of fighters actually want to do what you saw Mabayev do here, which is pull the fighter off the cage. But now he's driving him right back against it. He's going to try and drive that head up hard against the fence. It means the opponent can move less, and it means any attacks that come are going to be able to come from one side only. Well, Mabayev definitely has the cardio to sustain 
this type of a grinding approach. Has gone five rounds before in his professional career against Canadian veteran Chris Khalidzis back in October of 2019. Mm, nice solid shot to the body, then the head. It's a very good basic ground and pound strategy in mixed martial arts. When you take somebody down, they're expecting to get hit in the head. If you hit that head first, it's what they expect. So you whack them in the body, feel that elbow come down just a little bit. Then you hit the head. Close guard now for Magaramov. And as we said in the first round, in order to be offensive, he needs to open that guard, get a foot on the hip, try and create angles for himself, dig in. Decky Larkins, I believe, shortly going to want to see just a little bit more than he's seeing. He needs to square the hips a little mm -hmm. bit more as Almabayev does so, just incrementally keeping himself safe. Nice, nasty little elbows from bottom by Magarama. Pushing off against the cage, trying to bring... Amabayev into the more open form of the mat. Ninety seconds to go in the second round here. It often looks on television like these shots are all pity pats, but I promise you some of these are very painful, particularly the elbows that we've seen, particularly from bottom. There's a couple of nasty little elbows coming both directions. It doesn't have the, the same visual excitement of a spinning back fist, but it hurts. This time, Almabayev trying to dig that arm. He did. He got that underneath the back, and he's controlling it, exposing the head of Magaramov. Just has that arm pinned under his back. Magaramov, even with one arm, is doing an excellent job of defense. Very, very impressive jiu-jitsu here. Oh, he's a big shot for his trouble there. Fans in the arena getting a little bit restless. The fans are not impressed. They want to see a little bit more action. But like I say, Alma is winning this fight. He's doing just enough to keep himself in this position to prevent referee Dickie Larkin from standing them up. And the impetus now really lies with Maga Ramoff to do something to change the position. One thing to understand, Brave Nation, is when those feet are crossed, when that guard is closed, it is almost entirely, purely a defensive position. In mixed martial arts, it scores nothing. You want to see the fighter open those feet, put a foot in the hips, create some distance, stand up, try a sweep, try a back take, try a submission, throw some strikes. Asuomo Bayev clearly ahead, 20 to 18. Both fighters exchanging spinning attacks early. And leading into that slow, almost slow motion takedown from Asu Almabayev. My only regret in this fight so far, Phil, is that I know the extent, the depth, the beauty of Asu Almabayev's entire skill set. I would love to for Brave Combat Federation fans, for Brave Nation to get to experience it right now. They have seen far from all that he's got. A little bit of urgency has to creep in from Imran Magoramov. As you say, Kirik, he needs to maintain as much distance as he can. Stay on his bike, circle, circle, circle. Cannot let Asui Amobayev get close, close distance, clinch and take down. He, has, he hasn't shown any ability to even come close to standing once he's been taken down. That's happened for two rounds. I have every reason to believe it would happen in the third round. Double spinning back kick, but again, results in the mistake by Maga Ramov. This is mixed martial arts. You do not want to play to your other opponent's strength. You do not want to play a grappling game if that's not your game. Yeah, it's very intelligent game planning. It may not necessarily be that exciting to the uninitiated, to people who, who are more interested in seeing a stand-up back and forth, but you have to appreciate the, the MMA intellect, uh, the IQ of the game plan of Asuya Mubayev. Absolutely. If I had to sum this game up in a single word, it would be this one, winning. 
What you're seeing here is a fighter winning very, very handily. And the history books will never say beside the W if it was a pretty win or an ugly win. All they will say is it's a W. And we are def definitely seeing a W here literally every minute of every round thus far. And what more can Magaramov do in this position to, to get himself some kind of offense, to, to get himself back into the fight because we know he needs to finish to get a win. The very simplest thing he can do, Phil, is first open those feet. With the feet closed, there's very, very, very little that you can do from uh -huh. bottom. Once those feet are open, slide the heel in tight on the hip, pull the opponent in, and when you feel a little bit backward movement, explode away, kick away, pop up to standing, back to where you want to be. Yeah, I don't think we've seen the feet on the hips of Almabayev yet from Magaramov. The great, oh, little stand up here. Very good call from the bandit, Deke Larkin. Deke Larkin just became the most popular man in the arena after that stand up. Back's too close to the wall. Magaramov has his back too close to that cage. When he's his opponent closes, he's not going to have the distance he needs to escape. He's not implementing enough lateral movement for my liking. Just showing the jumping knee, and again, just shy with that spinning attack, and it's the definition of insanity, Kirk. Doing the same thing repeatedly and expecting a different outcome. So to keep throwing that spinning back kick when you know that Alma Bayev is just going to step to the side, step in, clinch, and take down is is it perhaps a bit of a bit of naivety on, on on the part of a fighter who's only had four fights as opposed to the guy he's facing who has 16 professional points i think it is a bit if you commit everything you've got to say a straight right hand probably the single highest way to win about most common way to win about in this sport it might make some sense but something like a spinning kick to the body that that, that has won fights and just a handful of time in the last 10 years or so it, it, it's not the best advice choice. And now we're seeing an advancement from inside guard to top mount. This is classically the most devastating position in mixed martial arts. Of course, it gets even worse if you can force the opponent to turn over. Switches. Jump back to side control now, yeah. trying to trap an arm, maybe looking for a choke. Arm isolation could also lead to a submission on the shoulder. Amabayev really starting to up the output now in the half guard position flattening out the back of Imram and again it's just very 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 smart wrestling and cage control from Almobayev Almobayev very briefly trapped and he's trying maybe Trey he's trying it again he's trying to control that arm of Magaramov and it may not necessarily being a, be a, an exciting performance, but Almabayev's under no obligation that to, to make it an exciting fight. He, his duty and his main purpose is to get in there and get the win, and that's exactly what he's doing. He is absolutely giving the fans a dominant performance here. Coming up to the final 30 seconds. Magaromov had a little opportunity to scramble up to standing. Didn't fully take advantage of it. Do you think fatigue might have been a factor in that? I, th I think, Phil, that it may have been surprise. Came out of nowhere just a little bit. There was a little scramble. Didn't realize until a split, split, split second too late that the opportunity was there. Wasn't able to capitalize. Didn't want to get his guard passed. So fell back, accepted his opponent, moved into guard. Final 10 seconds of what has been an incredibly dominant performance from Asu Almabayev. I would love to see the numbers to see just how much time Almabayev spent on top control there. There are actually some MMA, there is some MMA statistics technology out there that would help you and I, Phil. Brave is looking into it. Here's another little bit of technology courtesy of Green Hill, instant replay. Again, just dominant, smothering, suffocating wrestling from mixed martial arts. Transitions to the back, big dumb takedown, and from there it was workmanlike, it was effective, and it got the job done. And again, things like that elbow to the rib on television, it may look like it's not 
very, very hard, but it does hurt. There was that little scramble. And once again, a return to a very familiar position in this bout, the guard. A very valuable learning experience for Imram Magaramov. When he goes by and he watches this fight, which I'm sure he inevitably will, he'll be thinking to himself, why did I continue to throw that spinning back kick? He also showed a very impressive ability to defend himself from the guard. That is the purpose of the guard, to defend yourself against a bigger, faster, stronger opponent. He did that, but what he lacked from that guard was opening the feet up and trying to, he's got a half dozen basic options, can try and stand, can try an arm drag and take the back, submit, strike, didn't do any of that, and Carlos is now gonna give us the result of the choices he made. Three great rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges score about 30-27. Pre-unanimous decision victory. And 